Ah, February, the time of year where you're supposed to buy something special for your loved one because the government said so. February also has a few other special holidays that we can celebrate though too, like National Pokemon Day, National Hedgehog Day, and my personal favorite, National Pizza Day. But if none of those things happen to bring you the kind of joy that National Pizza Day does for me, well then hopefully some new games will. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life, and today we're here to share with you 15 games releasing on the Nintendo Switch in the month of February, in the year 2021. Putting together these videos always reminds me of the times that I would read Nintendo Power in study hall back in middle school and high school. Being excited about all the games on the horizon that we couldn't actually play yet. We didn't know if they were any good or not. Those were the days. You know the Morph Ball mechanic in Metroid Prime? Well, someone thought... You want to make a Morph Ball game without the Metroid? Actually, rolling on a Nintendo Switch on the 1st of February is a new 3D platformer called Glyph. You play as a little mechanical beetle character that's been quested to save an ancient city for some reason. And since you're a beetle ball, not to be confused with beetle borgs, you can roll and glide all over the place to collect items and defeat enemies. On the surface, the gameplay looks extremely satisfying, hopping from platform to platform and using its physics system to hurl yourself up and over an obstacle. Glyph reminds me a lot of Snake Pass on Switch, which is also a 3D platformer with tons of collectibles where the physics system really is its selling point. Glyph looks like a unique experience and hopefully we'll be able to come back and tell you something good about it soon. At heart, all of us are squirrel watchers. They're always playing around, having a good time, digging holes, and sometimes getting into trouble. They're curious creatures, and we are too. But in this new game called Nuts, some squirrels are doing some pretty shady business, and you're gonna get to the bottom of it. You play as a rookie field researcher who's tasked with spying on some squirrels in the fictional forest of Melmoth. You'll set up your tripods and align your cameras during the day, then hunker down to see what our furry friends are up to. I can't remember the last time I've been more intrigued about a topic as strange as squirrel stalking, but here we are. Also launching on the 4th as a Switch console timed exclusive is what you get when you ask the world for a 3D Hollow Knight. Blue Fire is a hack and slash action platformer that pulls many cues from The Legend of Zelda with its world design and some combat elements, but it throws in some extremely fast paced movement and platforming that you'd expect to see in a 2D game. Just like in a game like Hollow Knight, there's looking to be plenty of unique characters you'll meet and fight along your journey, and it looks like it could be packing quite the amount of content to keep us all busy in the new year, too. After being pushed back a few times, the free-to-play action RPG MMO Skyforge is finally coming to Switch on the 4th. Players take the role of godlike beings known as Immortals, who are trying to prevent their home planet from being invaded. Unfortunately, we're still unaware how this will run on Switch, but with it being a free-to-play game, which also thankfully means it won't require you to have an active Nintendo Switch Online account to play online, you won't have much to lose if you give it a shot come the 4th. Then, sliding ahead to the 11th, we're being treated to a game called Summer Catchers. This 2D platformer puts you in the shoes of a girl on a quest to explore the world to experience the summer she never had. Each level has you racing through new environments in her trusty upgradable wooden car. Think the Minecraft levels in a Donkey Kong Country game. What makes this game so appealing to me though is its art style. One minute you'll be driving through a dusty desert and the next you're in a wide open field and suddenly there's a giant whale flying through the sky in the background. Summer Catchers also incorporates a ton of different gameplay elements too. It looks like there's going to be some on foot exploration segments, there's a co-op mode and the developers even managed to cram in a bunch of boss fights. And I really hope the rest of the soundtrack is as good as the song used in the trailer too. So if you're intrigued by this title too, just like many games on the list this month, there's actually a free demo that you can go download on the eShop when you're done watching this video. Also coming to the Switch on the 11th is the sequel to the Tim Burton-esque eerie platformer Little Nightmares 2. This new entry stars a new character named Mono, who quickly meets up with the protagonist of the original, Six. And originally, I was under the assumption that the game was going to be co-op because of these two characters, but sadly it turns out that isn't the case. But they do still work together to escape the terrifying creatures that are hunting them down throughout the game. 
There are traps and puzzles littered throughout the levels to stop you dead, literally dead in your tracks. And even the demo is likely to make you jump once or twice. <laughs> it sure made me. <laughs> And to think that this is brought to us by the studio that gave us the stretchers? What a wide range of games. The classic co-op platformer from the Wii U is back on the 12th with a little something new in Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. It's faster, features online play, has cats, loads of cats, and has this new mode called Bowser's Fury, which, if we'll be frank, it's quite the talk of the town. For a while, this new mode was shrouded in mystery, but now we've learned it's a fully featured 3D Mario spin-off mini section of the game where you can finally let Mario be the Super Saiyan DeviantArt has been begging for for years. What do you think? I made him myself. If you're keen to learn more about the game, you can check out our full video preview, which we'll leave in the description down below. I personally never played much of the original 3D world, so if you're like me, it looks like there's going to be a lot to love about this re-release. Anodyne 2 won the hearts of PC players back in 2019 and is finding a new home on Switch come February 18th. And taking one look at this game, you can tell it belongs on a Nintendo console. Anodyne 2 Return to Dust is a fully-fledged 3D adventure game born from the era of the N64 and PS1. It features a giant open world to explore, but when it comes to its Zelda-like dungeons, you actually shrink down and dive into the minds of other characters, kind of like in Psychonauts, but when you explore them, they actually play out like a 2D Zelda dungeon. It's an interesting mashup that we can't wait to experience for the first time on Switch. One of these days, you're gonna be doing the dishes, you're gonna have one of our videos like this on in the background, and you're gonna hear us talk about Persona 3, 4, 5, or maybe even 6 come to Switch, and it's gonna hardcore catch you off guard. Unfortunately, today is not the day, but in the meantime, we're getting the brand new spin-off Persona 5 Strikers. This new Warriors style hack and slash adventure lets you fight as your favorite Phantom Thieves in a new way and takes the team on a brand new adventure. From the footage we've seen, it appears that the original voice cast is all reprising their roles in this new game too, and we'll even meet a few new faces along the way. If you're a fan of the Persona series or are just waiting for more Musou action after Age of Calamity, this looks like it should do nicely. The Legend of Zelda Four Swords series may be, unfortunately, dead and buried. <laughs> Thankfully, there's a new series looking to take a swing at the cooperative adventuring action on the 23rd in Rogue Heroes Ruins of Tassos. Up to four players can buddy up on or offline to take on dungeons to gather loot to upgrade your village and to keep the lands of Tassos safe from evil. The Switch is already home to so many Zelda-like titles, but it's not often a cooperative one rolls through. So if you're into the genre, this may be one to keep your eyes on. And I think there's a demo on the eShop too. The world hasn't had a new traditional crazy taxi game in almost 15 years. And even that was sort of just a port of the original two titles. But thanks to developers Team 6 and Lion Castle, you might be able to finally put away your Dreamcast or your GameCube or whatever it is you still play Crazy Taxi on. Launching on the 23rd on Switch is a spiritual successor to the series Taxi Chaos. This over the top arcade cab driving simulator lets you cruise around a city pick up passengers and get them to their destination as fast as possible with whatever means you have. Unfortunately, we've yet to see much of the game and we haven't heard the soundtrack, but we'd be crazy to not be madly excited about this. Be sure to check back with us over the coming weeks for more info as we learn about it. The Ghost and Goblin series is near and dear to many gamers' hearts. For me personally, I learned of its challenges early on in life and gave up pretty quick because it's not easy. But we know plenty of you are going to be excited to hear a brand new title is quickly approaching on the 25th with Ghost and Goblin's Resurrection. This new entry claims to be an all-out reboot, mixing elements of Ghosts and Goblins and Ghouls and Ghosts, with a brand new hand-drawn yet faithful art style for a new generation. It's great to see Capcom revisiting a beloved franchise like this, and hopefully if it does well and is a good game, hopefully we can get more reboots like this in the future. Some 
Sometime in the month of February, Capcom is also planning to release the Capcom Arcade Stadium, a free app which lets you purchase and play classic Capcom arcade games on Switch. Details are still fairly slim at the moment, but we do know that games will be bundled up in packs based on the era they were released, including titles such as Bionic Commando, Captain Commando, Final Fight, and some of the Street Fighter games. And way more, way more games! 1943, the classic shoot 'em up, will also come included for free for anyone who downloads the app. Hopefully, Capcom continues to support this program years down the road, because we'd love to see a 2000s era pack that includes games like Cannon Spike and Power Stone. We understand that asking for something like Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is probably unlikely because of the whole Disney license thing, but we would just love to see Capcom go hard into this and continue to feed us more arcade games that can't be played anywhere else. Souls fans will be happy to hear the futuristic, demonic action RPG Hellpoint is coming to Switch on the 25th as well. And from the little gameplay we've seen, it seems to be running extremely well on Switch. It's fair to admit that titles like Dark Souls and Bloodborne can get rather creepy at times, especially with some of its bosses, but the devs of Hellpoint really did a great job at making every enemy a disgusting mess of futuristic flesh. It's just gross, but in a good way. So if you're up for a challenge and a scare, this should take care of you. It feels like forever in the making, but on the 26th, Bravely Default 2 will finally be in our hands. This turn-based RPG series uses a unique mechanic that allows you to defend on a turn in battle and essentially bank up an extra attack to use later in that same fight. If you've heard the wonders of the original titles and you're curious to give it a go, there's a pretty beefy five hour long demo available in the eShop right now. And if you're one of the many who have never actually played the original titles on the 3DS, don't let the number two scare you away as much like the Final Fantasy series and its numbered entries, this game tells a brand new story with new characters to boot. A quality looking classic RPG like this doesn't come around often, so please, please be a winner. And there you have it, a whopping 15 games releasing on the Nintendo Switch in the month of February. Feel free to let us know in the comments down below which of these games you're most excited to get your hands on, and let us know if you think there's anything that we should have covered in this list. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, then why don't you go ahead and show your commitment, show your love for Nintendo Life by clicking that subscribe button. Give it a good old love tap, if you will and then ring that notification bell to be notified whenever we upload a new video. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there, and we will see you next time. Oh, what?